Hi all, so this video is going to be about um, interface management profiles. How do we get um, management onto the box um, from anything other than the management interface? Obviously, as we know, management uh, zero or ETH zero is the management interface normally for the device, but this would be on a separate network. And sometimes we need to get um, sort of what you'd call in band, so within the data path, access to the firewall. Also for a lot of services as well. So to show you where it is, so it's under network and interface management. And then we've got the management profiles here. If we just click into this one, we can see. So this is the internal management, including ping and OSCP. So pretty much self-explanatory, that title. So for administrative management services, so this is the services for the box. So HTTP, HTTPS server for the web UI, and Telnet and SSH for CLI access. As you can see, HTTP and Telnet is not, uh, it's not ticked. That's best practice, so it's you, you wouldn't normally use Telnet or HTTP to have any kind of plain text access to the firewall. And then network services that can run from this, this uh, management interface. So can we ping the interface without that? You won't be able to ping it. Is it going to host a, an OCSP uh, server on it as well? So for certificate, revocation, and lists and so on can be published on, on the device. SNMP. Can I use this this interface to uh, reply to SNMP re uh, requests, response pages? So for URL filtering, for uh, other block pages, or for continue pages for file uh, blocking that type of thing, you can direct to this interface, and this interface will serve those response pages. The user ID. User ID simply means is it am I going to be able to run an agent on this on this box, and is this going to um, is this going to apply to user ID requests? Also, if, you, if you're going to use user ID uh, in any of your any of your um, systems, uh, you need to have user ID enabled as well. Um, and then you've got a syslog listener for SSL and a syslog listener for UDP. So user ID can also be populated by a syslog listener. Uh, so where you have a device um, or any kind of authentication method, and within that syslog uh, entry, from that device is, is the username. The firewall can listen for that on either the SSL or the UDP ports, and uh, and this can and then that can be used then to populate the uh, user to IP mapping. On this side, we've got the permitted IP addresses. So permitted IP addresses is a simple ACL. Um, it simply is is what it says. It is it's, it's an ACL. So. Um, whatever is in here if there's no entries as always if there's no entries and it's an explicit allow that's it okay uh, and if there is an entry in there then it's going to have an uh, explicit deny then sorry uh, sorry implicit allow if it's blank because it Im implies it's everything is allowed if you do put a single entry in there either a subnet or a in uh, ip address or whatever that then is going to be there's going to be um an explicit deny at the end because it will just deny it because it no longer matches the list as with all ACLs. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to scan this uh, using my inside interface, so the gateway interface of the device. We're going to scan it using ZenMap, which is on this side here. We're going to scan the uh, the IP and we're going to see what ports are open. And then as we add ports to it, we'll see that increase or decrease. And then we'll talk a little bit about how uh, how the the access to that is is controlled as well by zones because if you have the interface so the interface we are, we're using at the minute is the default gateway for this uh, for this box but you may want to further control that and make sure that you've got app id and you've got content id working on that traffic that's going there now you can do that by using another zone um, put in the, the interface, a loopback interface into another zone, but then you're going to have to create security rules to get to that. So we'll look at that as well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just make sure that on our interface, which is on our lab network template, don't need to worry about that too much, and we have the management profile there of the internal management and OSCP because I can't spell and get those two mixed up all the time. And then we're going to go to advanced, and just to, for the uh, the initial demonstration we're going to remove that and then we're going to commit and push to our devices everything everything that has that template will get pushed to again we have template stacks which share a template which is this lab network template which that's the template that holds all my interfaces 
This is exactly the same on a standalone firewall. It's just simply under the network tab as opposed to templates and network. So we'll do that. Okay, so that's done. That's uh, completed now. And just to just so that we can see the two uh, different ones side by side, the panorama and the uh, and the standalone firewall. So. If we look at the standalone firewall, we can see that the IP is 172.16.01. That's the one that we're going to go. That's on the LAN side. And that's the IP address of it. So if we were to look for that in here, because this is in a template, again, if we simply go to Panorama, Templates, and we look at our stack for our firewall that we, we have. So we're going to view. And then we can view the, the key value pairs. And we see that the LAN address is 172.16.01. We can also edit it in here as well. So we can edit in there, click into it, and change it to, to whatever we, we, we needed to. But again, if it's here, it's under templates and network, and that's a simple representation of network on a standalone firewall. Okay, so now we're going to go into we're going to go into ZenMap, and we are going to do a a uh, quick scan of 172.16.0.1 and we're going to quickly scan that and then we'll get back what ports are running there shouldn't be any so there's no services no ports okay so if we come back to our come back to our firewall now and then we're going to add our interface management to here So we'll use that one. And then we get this warning that tells us if we're going to be adding this to a data interface, we are potentially exposing the files interface to any party that can reach it. That's fine, because we're all good. And go to interface management. So now we can edit our interface management. And just so we can see, I'm going to put that on there. So we've now got all of the options ticked. I'm going to commit and push that. Right, so now that's completed. We'll just go over again to our Zen map where we'll run that scan again. Okay, and so now we can look at our scan and we can see that we've got 22, 23, 80, 161, which is actually closed, but it's there, responded, uh, and 443. Uh, the eagle eyed amongst you will see that I've switched to a regular scan because it turns out the quick scan didn't actually show all the ports. So now we've enabled the, everything on the on the interface management profile. Theoretically, now we should looking at this, we should be able to see we've got ping. Telling that the OCSP is the port 80, as well as the HTTP that's going to respond to that, and the 443 would also be the response pages or the HTTP for the response pages as well. Um, so when we look at the uh, what we can access on here now, so if I just go to access this on my desktop, we can see that if we go to SSH to that now, the one in its own time, we get a prompt and clear that. And so conversely, also if we go to Telnet to it, So now we can we can get onto the to the box. Now, if we wanted to control that a bit further, we would also we would we'd start to remove this. So we'd remove these. Firstly, you need to remove HCP and, and Telnet because we don't need that. And then we're going to leave it with the uh, the ping, um, and we'll have it like that. Okay. So at the minute. Looking at our desktop, when it comes up, we can ping 172.16.0.1. Okay, so now we can see that it's pinging away, but we're going to remove ping from that. We're going to remove ping from the profile by doing that. I'm going to click OK, and then we're going to push that again. And then when we come back to it, the ping will no longer work. 
Just whilst that's doing that, an interesting thing to, to think is that you could also use a loopback interface as well. So if I created a loopback interface in here of um, loopback1, call it loopback, and then we'd have to put it into our default virtual router. Um, we don't have a logical router, that's something different. This is uh, the options that you will get from Panorama uh, in our VSYS. And then we're going to create a security zone for it, which is going to be zone. Okay, so we've now got another zone that our, uh, our management loop back is in, and we're going to add the same profile. Profiles can be reused. But if we then were to try and reach this loop back, oh, hang on, better give it an IP, hadn't I? So I'm going to make this loop back um, 10.10.1. So if we were to try and reach this loop back, we wouldn't be able to get to it because it's in a separate zone. So just to illustrate, we come if we come back to the, this one here so this interface that we're putting the management profile on which there is a management profile on it I promise you this interface we're putting the management profile on is in the land side zone so any communication as far as the firewall is concerned is intra zone communication which we know if we go to policies and then security and we scroll all the way to the bottom our intra zone default rule is going to allow that to happen now, if we move that, so we then move that to the management zone, what we're going to need is we're going to need a land side zone, because that is where the traffic is going to come in, to the management zone. And at that point, we can start applying our profiles to it. So once that's done, see how this is doing now. Okay, that's not really doing much at the minute. So once that's pushed, what we'll do is we'll just check again on the desktop. We'll check again for the uh, for the services that we've now got, and then we'll look at an ACL, and then we'll look at controlling it, and then evaluating that traffic through uh, through the firewall. Okay, so that's now pushed as we can see, and then we don't have ping anymore, and because there's no ping on that interface, that interface now won't respond to ping. So if we come back to our desktop, you can see now it doesn't respond to ping. And it'd be exactly the same as if we put the ACL in there. So if we put an ACL in there that didn't allow this desktop, which is 172.16.02, I believe, if that was if that was in there, then we still wouldn't be able to ping it because we're actually controlling access. Now that we've put an interface management profile, we're controlling access through that management profile to that interface. So for the next demonstration what we'll do is we'll just we'll allow ping again okay oh I'll do that quickly whilst I'm here so if we were to go for if we're going to add uh, an IP address we can actually use a variable here as well or we can use the uh, 0.1 um, 0 so we can use a subnet like that and then we just click OK and then that gets pushed out so, if we were then to be needing to create our loopback interface, okay, so our loopback interface we know is the uh, 1010 interface. Did I push that? I'm not sure. No, so I didn't push that change out. Okay, so we need to create a rule for that on our firewall, which will go into the VM London. Okay, we need to create a management rule. To create all the management traffic to the loop back. And that is gonna be from our land side. And the destination is going to be our management zone 
and then we're going to um, allow any, or we could actually we could make those applications. We could put SSH HTTPS in the end, so we're we're controlling that as well. The service any is application defaults, and then the actions, and then we can start to put our um, start, start to put our antivirus in. A vulnerability protection, which is really sort of very important for something like this, because you don't want strange stuff going on, and then anti-spyware. Although very um, anti-spyware is very, uh, I don't know, it's a loose definition for this one really. And then we're going to log it, and we're going to send it to mode 44 log forward in, and that's it. Okay. Now again, let's put it there. If because this is the rule base that's come from um, shared location or new firewall, which is the parent group. You can see the hierarchy building. If we just want to put that to the top, we can move it to the top. And of course, that will move it to the top of the local rule base, which is where we are. OK, so we're going to push that out to uh, to the firewalls. And then when we come back, we'll attach, we'll look to manage the firewall through the loop back as well. All right, so now that's pushed. We can just check back on the firewall now. So if we go back to our thing, we see we can ping again now. So we're pinging now and we've got an ACL in place. If I was to be pinging from another address, I wouldn't be able to get there. But let's also try. So what we said was we're going to go onto the loop back, which if we come here, we can just check. So our loop back interface that's on our firewall now is 10.10.10.1. And that is going to run through that, that management zone rule that we put in. Just take a minute because this desktop is really slow. So, yep, so now our management that works and we can log in to our firewall as long as I don't get the uh, get the username and password incorrect okay so now effectively so what we now have is we have a loopback address which is going to be that's going to be available from everywhere so every every interface will have a route to that assuming you haven't got a route somewhere else in your network to you know there's no overlap of IP addresses you can control that you can control the zone that it comes in on and it's ultimately a lot better than the interface management profile ACL, which is basically saying if you're from here, you can go there. I mean, when so when you are on the management interface of the box, the ETH0 interface of the box, you are restricted to that, that ACL, uh, that permitted list. But again, you can, run, you can run the access for that through the firewall as well. It just needs to, that traffic just has to go over the firewall, that's all. So that's interface management profiles that's how we get interface uh, interfaces to respond to management requests to user id where how we get it to listen to user id so that we can expand our ways of getting user id ip mapping into uh, into the firewall for your user based rules um, and again how we can then remove that and we can make that a loopback and we can use a loopback for our um, our management interface again we have to put the management profile on that and then we can control that through a rule our rule will be in here this is our management rule um, we can see there's been four hits on it but also now we're evaluating that traffic and we're looking at that traffic okay so that's that's interface management um, please like and subscribe if you like the video uh, and, and share and, and all those good things um, and we'll be back again soon.